Hello, Antoine Victor here with another screencast demo. Uh, in this demo, we are going to use Team Foundation Services to configure a gated check-in to restrict developers from checking in bad code that does not build successfully or pass the tests successfully. So let's start by going to our Pro Data Man Demos Team Foundation Services account. We're going to create a new team project. Team project will be called Echo Util. And we are going to use a Team Foundation Services version control and create. Now that'll create an empty TFS project for us. And then we will open that TFS project in Visual Studio 2017 Community Edition. So there's our empty project. We'll go to the project dashboard. And from the project dashboard, we will open our solution in Visual Studio. Now, since we haven't yet created a solution, it'll open an empty version of Visual Studio where we can then create our project. Now we have our project open in Visual Studio. We'll configure our workspace. Let's go ahead and to map to uh, C users and one source workspaces echo util. That default looks fine to me, so we'll map and get our solution. Now, if we'd already had code in there, map and get would have pulled the code down that we have in our repository. But since we just created our um, repository, there's nothing in it. So we're going to create a new project. And our new project is going to be a simple test project. And we'll call it Echo Test in the Echo Utility Solution. adding those solutions to source control in the process. Then we'll go over to our Solution Explorer and we'll rename this class to Test Echo. And yes, we want to rename the references. There's our Test Echo class and now we have another method here that we will call echo test. <clears throat> and in our echo test test method, we are simply going to make a reference to the echo util namespace where we will have a class called echo. And we are going to call the echo method on that class. And we're going to pass an expected value. That expected value is going to come from this string variable. Actual. And another string variable expected, which will set equal to hello world. And we'll stick the actual results from executing this method into our variable called actual. And then we'll just make sure that we can assert oops, that the values are equal, the expected value and the actual value that we get back. So that's our test. Now we are going to attempt to use the code generation tools here to create a new class which most likely is not going to work here because we don't have another project. 
So in order to create this echo util echo class with the echo method, we have to create minimal project structure. That means that we have to at least create the project that we're referencing here. In this case, that's going to be a Windows Classic Desktop class library project that we will call echo utility. Set the default lo location. And from our echo test, we are going to make a reference to the echo utility project that we just created so that our test knows where the solution under test is located. Now that should give us the ability to go back here to our test class and our echo test method and then use the generate new type dialog box to create our new echo class in our echo utility project. Ah. Since we used, named our project echo utility, our namespace is also called echo utility. So we'll add the proper spelling there. We should move the red squiggly over here to our echo class. Now we can use the generate new type and generate our new class echo, not in our echo test project, but in our echo utility project. We're going to have it create a new file called echo.cs, where we will then add our echo method. Now it's telling us our echo method doesn't exist, so we will generate our new echo method. Now we have minimal project structure, so that means we have just enough code to see our test fail. We'll run our test, see that it fails because the value that we got back was not the value that we expected. So let's go take a look at this echo method and we'll return instead of an exception, we'll simply return the expected string. Then we'll run our test again and we see that our test pass. Okay, so now we can check our code into source control. And this first time we check in, since we have not configured any gated check-ins, our check-in will go just fine. Uh, it won't prompt us for any additional information and uh, it won't run our tests. But now we have successfully checked our code into source control. If we flip back over here to the browser window. We can view the code that we've added to version control. There you can see we have our echo utility folder that has our echo test and our echo util. So now let's go ahead and create our gated check-in. We'll do that in the build and release section. In the build and release section, we'll create a new build definition. We'll use the .NET desktop as our definition template. And we'll tell it to use a hosted build server. Actually, we can do a hosted build server for 2017. And that's all we're really going to change here. Uh, one other change in the test assemblies, we're going to turn on code coverage results because that's not turned on by default. So we'll simply check this checkbox. And then we have to tell it to build automatically. So we're going to set up a trigger. And we're going to tell it to enable the continuous integration tr trigger, but also to enable gated check-ins. Now again, gated check-ins means accept the check-ins only if the submitted changes merge and build successfully. In addition to that, they make sure that our tests run successfully as well. One last change under options, because we want to make sure that if the build fails or if any of the tests fails, that we automatically create a work item. So create work item on failure is the feature that we're going to turn on. And we're going to have it create a bug and assign the bug to the person that requested this build, uh, which is also the person that tried to commit these changes to source control. Now you can see that there's 
other things that we could create here. We could create an issue, a user story, a task, a feature, um, if this check-in fails. But I think the default of a bug is what we really want to do here. So at that point, that's all we have to do. We're going to just save this build. We're not going to queue a new build. We're going to save the build. And then we're going to go back to Visual Studio. And in Visual Studio, we're going to switch this so it still returns the exception that it was returning before. Now we're going to save all of our files and we're going to attempt to check in again. Now this time, because our check-in uh, is going into a repository that has gated check-ins turned on, it's asking us um, if we want to build the changes for our gated check-in. So we're going to say yes, build the changes for our gated check-in. So what's happening now in the background, if we switch back over, if we go look at our builds, we can see that a build is queued up and in progress here. If we click on the build ID, we can go watch that build in progress. You can see here in the build console that our build succeeded and we're now running the tests. Since we're throwing an exception there, we should see some red text scroll by as our test fails. Oh, red text. So our test execution failed. We click on that test piece. We can view in the log where we ran some tests. And we had echo test run here, and the test failed because the test threw an exception. The exception was the method or operation is not yet implemented, and that matches right up with our error that we have in there. Uh, and notice that it doesn't show that our code was checked into source control because we had an exception. Now let's go look at our work and see if there is a bug assigned to us. You can see there a bug was defined and assigned to ProDataMan because our build failed. Now, by the way, um, if we were to go and check our ProDataMan email, we would also notice that an email has been forwarded to us notifying us that our build has failed. So now let's go back to Visual Studio and we will fix our echo method and have it return the expected value instead of an exception. Save those changes and then check our code into source control. Now again, our check-in will prompt us to build our changes. We need to build our changes uh, for validation before they can be committed to the team foundation server. So go ahead and build our changes for us. And this time, let's go look in the Team Explorer. We'll go to Home, and we'll look at the builds here in Team Explorer. You can see our last build failed two minutes ago, and our new build, our gated check-in, is queued for build. We double click on that takes us over to our build monitor you can see that our agent has been initialized it's initializing the job getting the sources basically pulling the files out of source control we didn't do any new get packages so it should skip right by that and then build our solution and this time we have no failures in our tests, so our test should get a green check mark and no red text. There we go, all green test text, our test succeeded. And the last step here that we didn't get before 
is finalizing the build check in gated changes so our changes actually got checked into source control that time because our build was successful so this concludes our demo of the gated check-in in team foundation services to restrict developers from checking in code that does not pass the tests uh, or does not build successfully thanks for watching <laughs>